What's up, superstars? Back at you again with another vlog. Today with a friend of mine right here. I'm gonna let him introduce himself. This is the director I was telling you all about. He produce, he make, he do everything. Edit, he do everything as far as movies. He's made over four movies so far. Uh, they can be streamed on Amazon. I'm gonna let him talk to y'all and tell you about everything. Uh, so uh, without further ado, I'm gonna introduce him right now. We right here out on the block, just chopping it up for a little bit. So I'm gonna, this is one of the first people I told you I wanted you all to meet. So uh, here he is now. Yeah, this twin right here, Kareem Mowat. We out here on uh, Kennedy Street, it's our hood. From when we grew up as youngins. And uh, we went through our little struggles, banging, busting, doing all that good shit, getting money. You know, leads into a dead end, of, co of course. Went straight off the cliff. Ended up in penitentiaries. Started shooting films. Started writing films while I was in jail, actually writing screenplays. And reading books on how to shoot films. And I said, you know what? I want to make a movie. And my artists, all artists, want to make movies. Every artist want to see that still image become a moving image. So, I used to do art. I said, man, I want to make a movie. Fuck that. But in the process of you wanting to make a movie, and you're writing movies, what ended up happening is, I started seeing movies that I watch in a different light. And I started seeing movies like Godfather, and Scarface, and Bronx Tale, and some of our favorite movies. A bunch of unnecessary racism towards us, you dig? So I was like, okay, I'm gonna shoot movies. And I'm gonna understand how you set these narratives up. So I came home and bought a camera. Went on YouTube, studied the tutorials on how to edit and how to make an independent film with no budget. Read a book by this guy called Robert Rodriguez. Got my homies. Put the film together. The one thing about writing anyway though, I was writing the film. You know, you kind of picture your characters. And that's what I do, I just picture my characters. So. When I'm picturing my character, I got a homie that could fit every role. This so-and-so, this so-and-so, this so-and-so, my sister could do this. I could get this car from so-and-so. I could shoot this around my way. Make it happen. Threw that bitch up on YouTube. What was the name of that movie? That movie name is Run. About a young nigga on the run for something that he ain't do. Took a cop, set him up. But I highlighted the, uh, highlighted what the family goes through when you're on the run or when you're in the streets banging what your father and your mother and your sisters go through sometimes people miss out on that you know yeah when, uh, I did a movie called Run and um, threw the bitch up on YouTube expecting to get like 2,000 views 3,000 views max that motherfucker at 1.3 million yeah and I won, a, won awards please believe yeah, that's the one you won uh, was at the Sundance Film, right? Yeah, I won it at, um, at the Titans. The Titan Award Films. And, um... What's up with you? That joint came out good. And then, started banging and started shooting another film. Immediately after that one. Called Evidence Room. I wrote that one when I was in prison, too. I got locked up and I used to just fantasize about niggas breaking up in the Evidence Room stealing all my evidence so then when I go to court I beat the shit <laughs> <laughs> and while I was fantasizing about that I was like shit that'd be a good idea for a screenplay so I started writing the joint you know what I'm saying I ended up going to court I lost in trial ended up with a 17 year sentence but I beat that shit on the pill and uh I was still writing my screenplay so that was one of the screenplays, I, one of the movies I shot when I came home also. You understand? Yeah. Is that, is that one of the movies you can stream on Amazon right now? That, you can stream that on Amazon Prime. Actually, you can stream all stream all my movies on Amazon Prime. Right. YouTube too, they on YouTube also. I try to put them on all the platforms that's possible, right? Yeah. And then I, uh, 
I went straight into shooting another movie because as an artist I wanted to challenge myself with my creativity so I shot another movie about a stalker named My Secret Admirer and I just thought about that I thought about the concept I'm gonna tell you how I thought about the concept it's crazy my homie my homie Eon he writes novels got a lot of books Lawton Legends he got uh, Fast Lane he got big books but we in a, we in a, we in a cell block I got some weed but I only got a little bit of weed left and I ain't trying to share this weed you know what I'm saying I'm trying to take this to the head <laughs> <laughs> so I'm walking around the cell block trying to find an open cell so I can blaze my weed to the head without being bothered you know somebody coming up man let me hit that you know what I'm so anyway I see an open cell and usually if nobody in the cell the cell is locked I see a cell that ain't nobody, I know ain't nobody in that cell, and I see the cell cracked. I slide in that joint real quick. My man Eon in that joint. The cell's got intercoms. So he's on the intercom, talking to the CO broad that's in the bubble. And he's spitting hot grease at the broad. I blazed up my weed, he ain't smoking. So I blazed my weed and just listened to him talking to the broad. And while he's talking to her, spitting game at her, I think about the concept of a dude that's writing letters to a girl as a secret admirer. And I wrote the whole screenplay that night from smoking weed in that jail cell. Yeah. All that few people I knew and um, did some acting, but at the end of the day, man, it's all about, it's all about just finding something that you like to do and just run with it, you know? Because at the end of the day, we don't, we really don't have any other options. You know, that, that going to work every day ain't an option. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's something you do just to pay the bills. But that that's unsustainable. You know, it's not going it's not going to get us rich. So, really, don't have no options. That if you find something that you like, you just go at it, get good at it get better at it keep getting better at it and just keep doing it and what I used to do when I was filming or when I was thinking about filming or starting a film that film is on my mind 24 hours a day you all in I'm all in 24 hours a day I'm thinking about my scenes I'm thinking about who going who got who I want in the joint how I'm gonna shoot it I'm on YouTube looking at tutorials of how to do certain things I'm learning to better how, better how to edit. I'm um, I'm purchasing other editing equipment or other st other camera stuff or better microphones or the the, the film is liter the, the project is literally on my mind 24 hours a day from the beginning until it's completed. Yeah, you end up having to shoot a lot of scenes and then they kind of your ideas change. You have to delete them and use other ones. Sometimes that can happen, right? And you got a lot of scenes that you just delete. But a lot of a lot of times is a lot of times you just want to focus on because you got to keep your mind on it 24/7 because you don't want to lose track of what you know. Yeah. And you and you want to be. It's almost like it's like working out. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? You you want to you want to get them blast. You want to get. You want to get your six pack. You want to get your arms ripped up. You want to get your chest and blast. So next thing you know, you don't change your diet. Mm -hmm. And you got this program where you get up at six in the morning and then you eat your oatmeal. And then you go back to sleep and then you eat this and then you work out. You do chest today. You know what I'm saying? So you literally, your whole life becomes that. Your lifestyle changed because you got a goal of what you're trying to get to. Right. You know what I'm saying? I want my body to look like this. I want to get a blast. I want to be able to bench press 325 and... So you pretty much, and, and and it's a long term, it's a long term project. Yeah. So it's the same thing with any any project, any other project. Is that 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 hundred percent focus, that laser. Yeah, that that laser like focus where everything else is irrelevant. Everything everything else is cool, but it ain't as important as this right here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then that's too one of the things I talked about in one of the earlier videos, like how society is set up. To have us thinking as workers, not being free thinkers. 
Yeah. You know, so you got to free your mind out of that box. Right. And then commit to what you what you believe in and stick with it. But the good part about it is you could be at work at your nine to five and still focus on your project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you might stop what you're doing and pull your phone out and write down your little idea real quick. Put your phone back mm -hmm. or put your recording app and record it into the phone. And that way you still, while they paying you, because you got your bills to pay, you still come up coming up with your ideas for your own projects. Yeah. So when you get off, you know the, you know what the concept is. You know they say is uh, nine to five pay the bills, but six to ten get you rich. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. That's like even me with doing this. Like I'm always thinking because you know just creating content on a daily basis is really not easy like you think it is. Like for real, <laughs> I thought I'd be able to figure out okay I could do this and post videos every day, but it's not. Just finding the time and the idea that's gonna actually have something that somebody wanna watch. Yeah. So it's times ten when you're making a movie. That's what I'm saying. And you just gotta be you just gotta be creative. I think once you once you once your mind becomes free and all the creative shit can start coming in and you start seeing shit that everybody else don't see. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like an entrepreneur. You know how entrepreneurs think they see a opportunity everywhere. Mm. Maybe we should create a company that does it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the same thing with, with uh with anything else, man. And that's what we're gonna do, man, with filmmaking. And I come out of I come out of penitentiary and became a filmmaker with no schooling. I don't have no college education. Educated myself, self educated. Yeah. Which is probably better than college. Cause I did it my way. Yeah, and you know what you learn is genuine. Exactly. And I ain't, and I ain't, I ain't had to pay them all. I'm not in a hundred thousand dollar debt. I could do the same thing that somebody in Hollywood could do, or somebody that that went spent a hundred thousand on school to do. And I, I learned it for free. Yeah. Cause all you gotta do is lock in. You know yeah. what I'm saying that's what you just call it in penitentiary. You call it lock in. You go to your cell, lock that cell door, and lock in. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Dudes used to do that to lock in to go work out or maybe to read and study. Yeah. Out here, I lock in when I got a project on my mind and put my phone on silent. Yeah. And you betting on yourself. Betting on myself. And you gotta you, and you got to have that confidence because you could create something, and you know you're always gonna have people that's not gonna like it. Yeah. But as long as you like it, and you know you did your best. And for real, that's all I can. Yeah, and then there's eight billion people on the planet. So out of them eight billion people, you go find gonna like people. It. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, that's the thing. Don't let what well, because people see somebody trying to do something, and the easiest thing to do is try to discourage them because they don't have the cap, the courage yeah. to try for themselves. Right. So when you do it, you can't let them type of people make you feel inadequate. Hell no. Nah. Just keep moving. Do your best. Yeah. And. Believe me, if you do your, if that's your, if that's your best, and most times you're never gonna feel like it's your best best. You yeah. always feel like you can do better. But if you do your best and you, you do the hard, you put that hard work in, you best believe that uh, people appreciate hard work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No matter what you do, if if you put a lot of work in it, people gonna appreciate it. Yeah, they could they could see the passion that go into the work. Mm hmm They could definitely see it. And they're gonna appreciate it. Ain't no difference from music. Ain't no different from somebody that do designing. Ain't no different from a barber that cut hair. You know? Yeah. When he put that work in, and you could tell he put some hell of a work, you'd be like, oh man, I can go back to him. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even if it's a little nick over there, I know, I know he ain't mean to do that. Yeah. Cause I know he a monster. I seen his, you know what I mean? Uh huh. I seen his passion. So that yeah, that applied everything, man. I, and I look at. I look at what we doing, you know, as filmmaking, then I look at, I tend to look at the big picture, the, the humongous picture. I tend to look at the Elon Musk and the Steve Jobs of the world. Yeah. And you say, damn, imagine the passion he had when he said, man, I'm going to make an electric car. And how many people was in his air saying, it ain't going to work. Yeah, yeah. And you stuck with it like, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. You know what I'm saying? You know, he created PayPal and took his PayPal money and started Tesla. So... When I look at dudes like him, and even somebody like Steve Jobs, 
when he came up with the idea of a smartphone that you could touch and do all this old crazy shit with. And you could even look at somebody like Donald Trump. I guarantee you when he said he was running for president, how many people probably was in there like, you ain't got a chance, buddy. Yeah. Barack Obama. Man, I'm going to run for president. Black man. Running for Cut it out. Uh -huh. Man, sit your ass down, man. Be a senator or try to go for a governor, man. You ain't got no chance of getting in that White House. Like, okay, I hear you. Yeah. I hear you, buddy. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna let you go ahead and stand over here and watch my work. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? That un un unshakable belief in itself. You gotta have that, my bad. You gotta have that, that, that unshakable belief in yourself, like you say. I know I could do it. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 watched, I watched Floyd Mayweather on a, on a blog. Floyd said, man, I ain't even trained when I fought Conor McGregor. You got to train. Uh-huh. You know I, mean? I, know, I know where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we, we all got to have that confidence, man. That's one of the, the, the Jews say that is one of their, um, one of their reference points that, that every day you got to, every day you got to act like you, what's how they say, they say, uh, every day you got to act like you're trying to prove something. Yeah. Uh -huh. If you never stop doing that, you gonna always keep growing, getting better. Better and better. Every yeah. day you try, you act like you're trying to prove something. Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine every day you trying to prove something, not to the world, but more to yourself. Yeah. But the world gonna recognize. Uh huh. The world gonna the world gonna recognize what you do. Yeah. It might, not, it might not be overnight, and that's the biggest that's the biggest issue with us. Because we come from the streets, so we used to we used to get now shit immediate. Uh -huh. We used to that fast money, that that immediate response, that quick rush. If you buy a brick, you chop it, you sell it, you got your money. It's quick. Yeah. So now you're going into a field where you creating a project that might take you months to create that project. And you put it out there and you don't see no money for years. That's a hell of a transition to go through by itself. Yeah, you gotta gotta have that long-term vision now. You gotta have that long-term vision, man. And, and I seen uh, Jay-Z say it the other day, I seen in an interview, and Jay-Z say, man, look, you gotta have that belief in yourself to where even if you create something and nobody likes it, as long as you know in your heart that you did a great project, don't even worry about it. They're gonna catch up to you. Yeah, and the same video is gonna end up getting a bunch of views later on. They might not get them right away. It's gonna come. Yeah. It's gonna come. Yeah, and that's that's one of the things I told myself when I did this is that don't don't be checking to see everything every day, worrying about how many people look and how many people following. Just you know, just keep grinding, and then look back a year from now and see where you are then. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't look for that instant gratification because it ain't coming. Yeah. You know, it come for some people, but it's a well. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, yeah. Everything can happen, but it's like it's it's against the normal as yeah. opposed to being the normal. Yeah, it's abnormal. Yeah. So, so it is, man. We're gonna keep grinding, man. Taking our time. You know what I'm saying? I done caught cases out here and laid down and did time for shit out here. But now I shoot movies out here yeah and I got the experience because I done did all this shit so I could put it in a film uh -huh. and it's gonna be good buddy and it's gonna be authentic yeah. if and you know the authentic. real sure. yeah that's what's up so those are some definitely some Jews drop that's why I wanted y'all to meet him and get to speak with him because I know that he has some things so if y'all take into what he was saying and really listen to it you know let your mind go and just listen honestly to what he's telling you. Realize the message that was sent. And, you know, that it should help everybody that take the time to listen to this. It should help you and help you become a better you to some extent. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So. Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. Kareem Mo, K A R I M M O 101. That's my IG. And what's your YouTube? So my YouTube is uh, Kareem, K-A-R-I-M, last name Mowat, M-O-W-A-T-T. -T. You go on YouTube and once you type that up, all my movies come up. You go to Amazon Prime, you type that up, all my movies come up. 
You go to Instagram, Kareem Mo 101, K A R I M M O 101. You see the storylines. You see what we're talking about and you see what we're doing. You dig? Yes, sir. All right. So, I'm going to say thank you to Kareem and uh, Superstars. I'll get back at you again soon with another video. Y'all have a good evening and I'll talk to y'all next time. Peace.